make no mistake about it, this is a war zone. Ted Hutt, honor bound. Some of these guys have been locked up in here for eight years. You will refer to them as detainees. You will not call them prisoners. You can talk to them, but do not let these guys know anything about you. Do not let them get inside your head. How did you end up in this place? How did you end up here? It's been a very long time that I have been waiting, not knowing how all these things are going to end. All these things can change. Do you like it here in Guantanamo Bay? I don't know. It's not as black and white as they said it was going to be. I never agree to follow your rules. If I follow your rules, it means that I'm agreeing that you have the right to give me rules. But you don't. One of your guys here, he told me that he knows I'm innocent, but I still cannot go home. No country, no city will take me because I've been here. You and me, we are at war. Power 471. He's not coming back. What are you gonna do, Cole? I'm not gonna give up. No one here goes anywhere. So when this trailer dropped on, I believe, late Friday, it got a lot of attention. Uh, and there are a lot of things about this film that I like, but there's one big thing about it that I do not like, uh, and that's that it didn't have the guts to focus on a prisoner in Guantanamo Bay that is guilty. Now, I'm sure that there are, tragically, prisoners in Guantanamo Bay who are innocent, but if this movie truly wanted to look at the gray, the grays of Guantanamo Bay, I really loved that line where she said, this isn't as black and white as I thought it would be. But you know what? Innocent is pretty black and white. And being wrongfully imprisoned is pretty black and white uh, in terms of not only, you know, the victimization of this individual, but the vilification of what the United States is doing with Guantanamo Bay. And as I said, I'm sure that is happening in some instances. It happens in regular prisons in the United States, so I don't see why it wouldn't happen in a larger scale with Guantanamo Bay. However, I think the majority of the prisoners there are guilty and are very dangerous. So I think the film would have been, I would have had much more respect for it if it didn't take the easy path out and said, well, we, we can't really get anybody to commiserate or, you know, with either this individual who is a terrorist or with someone like, you know, or, or Kristen Stewart's character who befriends a terrorist, you know, who's going to go along with that? And I'd say, you know, don't underestimate your audience. Uh, you know, that's, that's, a, that's a bold, interesting story. If you really want to get people's attention and talk about the crazy stuff that's going on down there uh, and, you know, the, the, have a true discussion of the right of what country to police others, etc., there's your, there's your movie. So I'm just, you know, I just, I'm just a little tired of this very easy, you know, uh, way to address the situation, uh, which I don't think is, is particularly honest. And I don't think it's fair to, you know, the soldiers who are down there. I don't think it's fair to the prisoners who are in the, who are in the camp. But I'm curious to how you guys feel. Uh, do you like the fact that this is another, this is another story of a wrongly imprisoned, uh, you know, supposed terrorist? Or, uh, and would you not watch the film if he was a guilty terrorist? Are the filmmakers here correct that you would be, I'm out, I'm checking out, this is not sympathetic to me at all? Uh, and also, you know, do you, are you interested in such a highly politicized movie like this? I mean, whenever you bring up Guantanamo Bay, it's a difficult discussion. Uh, although, uh, outside of, you know, whether or not they should have focused on someone who was guilty or not, I do applaud Kristen Stewart for making this kind of film. She's had a rough road, uh, you know, a lot of cracks about her acting. I mean, she was really bad in Snow White and the Huntsman, so she has no one to blame there but herself. And she has no one to blame about uh, the personal uh, bad publicity that she's gotten for having an affair with a mar her married director on Snow White and the Huntsman. She never should have made that movie. Uh, but it looks like she might be able to rebound by going the indie route. Uh, and also, you know, you could say uh, in the, you know, in the 
you know, the pessimistic point of view that she's she's going, she's trying to so just trying to save her career and turn things around. Or you could be optimistic and say, hey, you know what? Kristen Stewart isn't worried about all that scandal and controversy. She just wants to use her celebrity for good and to make good films and take chances, much like Daniel Radcliffe and Robert Pattinson. And it's not working out too well for those two guys so far, although I think Horns might be Daniel Radcliffe's breakout film. And but maybe this will be Kristen Stewart's. We'll see. I think she's doing a very nice job from her for her, from her perspective as an actress here, uh, I think she's a great choice to portray a woman in the military. Uh, you know, you do see a lot of women who are small in, in size and stature uh, joining the armed forces, and I think their contributions are just as valid and important as anyone else's. Uh, so I think it's great to represent that demographic uh, in a movie like this. I hope, although I don't think it would help women at all in the military if you were like, look, they're the only ones who are sympathizers. They don't follow directions. We can tell them how to interact with the, with the detainees, uh, and you know, they're, they're always difficult, and this is why women shouldn't be in uh, the military. I hope that is not the way some people will take this movie, and I hope it isn't the direction it goes. And I hope that it shows that while she you know, fights for what she believes is right, that she does it within the system, and she's a team player, which is so important in the military. I mean, you saw a similar thing in Zero Dark Thirty, where Jessica Chastain's character was very difficult, well, brilliant, but yet I guess I'm a little tired of you know the lone woman in a, working in a group that's predominantly men, uh, who can't get along with anybody and just isn't particularly well liked. Uh, I think you can do both. We need to do both if we want to be stay a part of these groups and continue to integrate them and make them um, equally female as they are male. So those are my that's my very complicated thoughts on the film. I'm very curious to see what you guys think, uh, and I hope you'll write your thoughts down below. Thank you so much for tuning in to my review. Thank you everybody who asked for it, and you can watch some more episodes right now.